for 10 days after Christmas, I was quarantined in my bedroom and it gave me the opportunity to read some books. One of them was Brene Brown's new book called Atlas of the Heart, in which as a social scientist, she mapped out the 87 different emotions that give meaning to being human. It was an interesting read and a study in human dynamics, but it did get me thinking about our faith and our life together in the church. It didn't take me long to identify the emotion that from this list of 87 really defines our life together in the church. It's love. Love appears 586 different times in scripture. We're all familiar with the three Greek words, eros, philos, and agape. And an academic look at the scripture is intriguing, but for their for me, there were certain passages that just leap out when you talk about love. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. From John's gospel, we hear that I give you a new commandment, that you should love one another just as I have loved you. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Jesus is telling us plainly that love for God and neighbor is core in our life and our faith together. And it identifies us as disciples, followers of Jesus. It's reiterated in our Lutheran understanding of the Augsburg Confession and the importance of our faith in Article 4. Whoever throws away love will not retain faith, however strong it may be, that person does not retain the Holy Spirit. The early church took this to heart. Christianity grew not through evangelical fervor or evangelical revivals. It grew because people saw that Christians lived in a different way. They loved and cared for others and their neighbors and strangers. People in the Roman Empire were surprised about these people who loved the unlovable. They wanted to be part of this movement. We are the church together because we are defined by this human emotion of love for one another. And I wonder how we're doing in this trying time. We've certainly reminded people that for the love of neighbor, we follow safe protocols for COVID to keep them protected. But I think it's easy for us to say how it is that we've demonstrated love. But how have we demonstrated love for those people around us with whom we disagree. Do people who are outside of our communities of faith say, look at those Lutherans and how they love one another. I wanna be part of that kind of community. What is the most radical loving thing I can do to demonstrate Jesus' love to the world? It's not me telling you that answer. It's all of us struggling with that question together. What does love look like in this moment of time so that everyone will know that we are Jesus' disciples by the way we love one another? Brene Brown said in her writing on love, we need more real love, gritty, dangerous, wild-eyed, justice-seeking love. Perhaps that needs to be our New Year's resolution, our collective prayer that because of our real love, gritty, dangerous, wild-eyed, justice-seeking love, it becomes clear that we're Jesus' disciples, that there is a real difference in these lower Susquehanna Lutherans. This year is a time for us to journey with Jesus. Will you join me? I wish you a blessed and happy new year. Mm -hmm.